Okay, welcome back to AP Statistics. Um, again, I'm not affiliated with the College Board. I just uh, teach an AP Statistics class in a high school where I'm known as Dr. Kling. And today's topic is more on failure models. It's failure models where we're solving for n. Remember, we have things like p to the n, 1 minus p to the n, keep track of the parentheses, 1 minus p to the n, and 1 minus 1 minus p to the n. And I'm going to illustrate solving for n. I'm going to take you into the world of modern mortgage finance. And I'm going to warn you that I'm going to use an example where the, the, rec the recipe might be good, but the what I'll call situational judgment judgment is not good. And this happens a lot uh, in statistics. So the analogy would be uh, if you had a cop who knew the recipe for a gun, that is the, the cop knew how to how to fire a gun, knows about guns, is very accurate out on the firing range, but has lousy situational judgment, then that cop is still going to be, you know, the, is going to be dangerous. So there's the recipe is how to fire the gun, how to fire, and the situational judgment is knowing when to fire. And in statistics, a lot of innocent people have gotten hurt by statisticians who know how to do something, how to use a recipe, but don't use good situational judgment. And I'm just going to warn you ahead of time that this example I'm going to give, the calculations for n will be correct in the recipe sense, but the situational judgment was not correct. Okay, so here we are. We are in the mortgage industry, mortgage securitization industry, and we um, let's say that we have a pool with three mortgages in it. I'll just represent them as circles. And there's somebody who is willing to buy, uh, buy into this pool, but only if they are perfectly safe, if none of the mortgages default. And so you split the pool up into two tranches. There's the junior tranche, which will take a which will take a loss if one, two, or three mortgages default. And then there's a senior tranche that only takes a loss if all three default. So the junior tranche, if there's one or two defaults, is going to take more than their share of losses in order to protect the senior tranche, who will only take a loss if all three default. So that'll be our story. Um, so what is the chance that the uh, senior tranche will, t will take a loss? Well, let's say that the probability of a default, let's say these are subprime mortgages, so they're not very very good. So the probability of a default is, let's say, 1 out of 8. So that 0.125 default. And so what's the probability that all three default? All three default. And by now we know that that's equal to 1 over 8 cubed. And we can go back to our spreadsheet and do that quickly. So we have 3, and the probability of defaulting is 0.125. And we better, since it's no longer four engines, let me just erase all that stuff. And this is what we're interested in. The the all three of them default is 0 0.0019. So let's take that back to our notes. So what did we have here? We had 
equals point zero zero one nine. Well, suppose to get a triple A rating on the senior tranche, we can't have this point zero zero one nine. We need to get something that's a, that's less than or equal to point zero 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 one. Okay, so that this thing we've got to bring down to point zero zero one. And we've got to do that by adding, we're going to do that by adding more mortgages to the pool. So we're going to say 1 over 8th, 1 8th to the n is less than or equal to 0 0.00001. So this will give us a triple A rating on the senior tranche because it will give us a very, very low probability that the senior tranche will lose any money because the senior tranche only loses money if all of the mortgages in our pool default. Those are the rules we're playing by. So we're going to solve for the n that does this. And we can do that in a couple ways. One way is just to go back to the spreadsheet and do guess and check. So we can do that. Uh, let's try it. Okay, we'll just keep raising n. And remember our target for this number is 0 .00001. So let's just set that target. Target equals point zero 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 one. Okay, and we'll we've got the probability. We'll work on n. So let's try when n is four. We didn't make it down to point zero 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 one. How about five? Um, hold on a second. We're going to put some more decimal places in here. Okay, we made it to point zero 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 three. We're getting a little closer. Let's try with six mortgages in the pool. And six mortgages in the pool, we did it. We got below our point zero 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 one target. So that's our right answer. Uh, we need six mortgages in the pool. Okay, so when we did guess and check, we found out the answer was six. And now let's work out how to solve it exactly. Has anyone uh, already thought about how to do that? Well, when you have, when what you need to solve for is an exponent, you need to use logs. I never thought I would actually have to use logs in a real problem, but here is the case where you do. So we do n times the log of 1 over 8, and we want to do less than or equal to log of 0 0.00001. Now we could either use natural logs or uh, base 10 logs. It doesn't really matter as long as we use the same thing on both sides. And so we're going to do n is equal to the log of 0 0.00001 over the log of 0.125. That's 1 over 8. And we'll see what we get. Hang on, I'll do the calculation and I'll let you know. Okay, I got 5.54 approximately, which, uh, if we're looking for the next highest number, integer looks a lot like 6. So we got, so that's how we solve for n. Okay, but I said this is a case where there's a good recipe and bad situational judgment. What was wrong with the situational judgment? The problem is that this mo these failure models apply when we have data that or events that are independent. And having mortgages default turned out not to be independent. It turned out that when house prices were rising, all the, def the default rates on mortgages were all very low. Uh, people wanted to hang on to their houses, but when house prices are f were falling, there were lots of defaults, and those defaults caused house prices to fall even more, causing more defaults, so they were not independent. Uh, and so when people made up these mortgage pools and they solved for the right number of mortgages to get a AAA rating, they were assuming independence when there really wasn't independence. And so that was a case of maybe the recipe was right, but the situational judgment was bad and the consequences were bad. So thanks, and next time I think I'll talk about the birthday problem.
which is probably too complex. You don't need. It'll be an optional thing for this course, but uh, it might be fun anyway. So see you next time.